Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today on the channel, we are making Pie Crete. It's a mixture of sawdust and ice, and it is incredibly strong. And I did this all myself. It took me a long time. Mm -hmm. It was very hard. Uh, I toiled no. all day. We're gonna be building a fort, and maybe afterwards, we're gonna go demolition ranch on it. So stay tuned. Pycrete is so strong in such an amazing substance that the government at one point was considering making an aircraft carrier out of it. Now, thankfully, they never did that because it's kind of a stupid idea, right? But this project started off as we wanted to see how bulletproof Pycrete was. And we actually went out and tested that last year. Unfortunately, we didn't freeze the Pycrete long enough. It turned out to be a complete disaster. And we ended up wasting a day and a lot of money. But this time we, uh, we did it right. And I said, you know what? Let's go one step further. Let's try to build a Pycrete shelter and we're gonna shoot the hell out of it once all is said and done. All right, guys. So I've been waiting for this moment to put my mask back on once again. This is why we're wearing this personal protective equipment because this stuff is incredibly dirty and you probably don't want to breathe it in, especially in the amounts that we're playing with here today. So we got our mask, we got our protective eyewear, we got our uh, Tyvek suits and the whole nine yards. All we've done, all I've done, because I did all this myself, is I made this thing pretty much level and then I poured enough water in to fill it up. They say that the right proportion is 14% of the weight should be sawdust, the other remaining 86% of the weight should be water. So we got 36 of these blocks and we're going to assemble out of this a shelter that I'm going to spend the night in. All right, so uh, I gotta do some work, right? Let's fill up a bucket. Let's get the bag. All right, so we're gonna take our WD-40 and we're just gonna spray it around in here. When this turns into ice and when it freezes, just gonna drop out nice and neat. And I know that because we tried this experiment last year and that part of the experiment worked really good. Where's my scoop at? Get my scoop on. As you can see, there's a reason why I got the uh, hazmat stuff on because this stuff sucks. Make sure you don't have any open flames around. There's something about scooping powder. It's so satisfying. All right, that should be enough. We got some water kicking around here. So we're just gonna take some water. How many of these will do the job? How many uh, did you guys fit in here? Four? I think you're lying. Oh, still drinking. It's alive. It's taking it all. You weren't lying. I shouldn't have doubted you. So we're gonna leave about an inch from the top just so that when it freezes, this is all gonna expand and we don't want to uh, protrude too much out the top. One thing about this sawdust, it is extremely dusty. So you're gonna wanna make sure you have on a mask, protective eyewear, and a protective Tyvek suit like this. This thing keeps slipping down my damn nose. So we got them all out here, it's minus 35. My hands don't work anymore, my ears are frozen. And uh, I did this all by myself. I brought all, each one of these out here. Actually, a guy who's about half my age. As you can see, I brought out more than he did. Or no, we tied. I tied with you. Good job. And he was in the army for five years. So that just goes to show. 24 hours is not gonna be long enough, even at minus 35, for these things to freeze. Because the reason why the sawdust and ice mixture works so well is because it kind of co-insulates. So the reverse is true. It takes longer to freeze all the way to the core. So we're gonna have to leave it for a good week's time. Hopefully they don't explode, but uh, I guess we'll find out.
the same properties of the picrete that allow it to resist melting are the same thing that makes it so damn hard to freeze. So as you can see, we've had a few that have broken apart even after a week of trying to freeze this stuff. So if you're planning on building picrete anything, make sure you give it a couple good weeks of freezing. YouTubing ain't easy. You guys can probably see that there are gaps in our picrete bricks. So we're gonna have to fill in all the gaps with sawdust. We're gonna put a little bit of water on it. It's all gonna freeze into a big block of solid ice. Can't wait for the endless comments about how this is not gonna withstand a nuclear blast. YouTube, I need 10 million views to pay off this video. Help a brother out. Okay, so now we gotta go gather a bunch of wood, a bunch of logs, and we're gonna lay them across the roof. We have to go and probably cut down about 50 odd trees, dead trees, of course, and uh, we're gonna lay those over top. Then we're gonna get our wood stove in there, we're going to get the ground nice and level. We're probably gonna put down some spruce boughs or a tarp and we're good to go. That's what happens when you live in Canada. When you do dumb shit like this. All right, so it's been about a week and a half that I've let this thing sit out here and everything is nicely settled in. A lot of the gaps in the picrete have fused together because we've had lots of variable temperatures and this thing is just rock solid. Like you couldn't drive a truck through this thing right now, I don't think. It is very, it's like just one giant block of, of picrete that it's all starting to get fused together. So yeah, come on in and see what it looks like. So as you can see, a lot of the light gaps have fused. There's still a few parts where the picrete was broken when we first set it up. You can see there's definitely some, some melting of the picrete along here. So what I'm probably gonna have to do is I'm going to uh, put some layers of that thermal reflective heat just around here, just to throw some of that heat back. We got the Winterwell wood stove in here. Got some nice ambient fire vision coming in through here. This pipe isn't getting as hot as I thought it would. Sticking out there, so that's kind of nice. It's resting on just a log right now, but I will have to seal that gap. It's good to have a little bit of ventilation in your tent anyways. This definitely provides good shelter from the wind. It's a strong structure. This is like a foot thick of insulation. So once I have this door shut, I mean, it's gonna be cooking in here in no time flat. Understand that most tents are, what, a couple millimeters thick? I'm not gonna need a whole lot of wood to make it through the night. In fact, I'm thinking that I'm gonna have this thing turned down because it's gonna be way too hot in here. Clearly, this is not a survival shelter. This is just a novelty shelter build, but it's fun. Building forts is fun. What I look forward to most is destroying this thing with a lot of ammo, uh, some buckshot. I think we're gonna try buckshot first. We got a guy who's in the military who's gonna come out and uh, bring some of his more high-powered rifles. So that should be a fun experience. But yeah, I mean, you know, as far as a uh, Pie Creed shelter goes, I think it's the first time it's ever been done on YouTube. So I'd say we did all right. What do you think, Marshall? Come on, come on. <laughs> He's like, this ain't civilization. You are getting soft, man. You're getting soft. You're supposed to be a, uh, you got fur, you got a built-in bed, you got everything you need. See, he's like, ah, oh. all right. So domesticated. Let me know if you have any requests or suggestions with respect to our Piecrete Super Shelter. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Canadian Prepper O. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com.
where you'll find high-quality survival gear at the best prices, no junk, and no gimmicks. Use discount code PREPPINGGEAR for 10% off. Don't forget, the strong survive, but the prepared thrive. Stay safe.